Hello, you are welcome back to our class again today. In this particular class, we are going to be bringing you the physics practical um, in an alternative format as was presented by the West African Examination Council in the year 2017. In this particular experiment, we have the following apparatus, the beaker, we have water, we have lead shots, and then a test tube with scale, a beam balance, and of course, a stopwatch or a stop clock as is available for you. Now we have here the diagram for this particular experiment you see. And this diagram tells us about what the procedure would be. And what are we expected to do in this particular experiment? We're expected to first weigh the test tube and record the mass. So when you must have weighed it and recorded the mass empty, then you load it with sufficient lead shots. The reason for this is so that it can be able to float vertically in a beaker of water, as you saw in the apparatus. So once we have loaded it with lead shots and then dipped it inside or immersed it inside the beaker, the next would be to measure the depth of immersion, D, as it is from the scale on the test tube. And once we achieve the depth, then you pull out the test tube and its content out of the water and then weigh it completely like that to ensure that you get the mass of both the test tube and the lead shot. From here, we can be able to now deduce the mass of the lead shot that has been used in the course of the experiment because already we know the mass of the test tube. So by the time we subtract, we we'll get the mass of the lead shot. Once this is done, we will return the test tube and its content into the water again. In this case, we want to find out the time, or we want to find out the time it will take the test tube and its content to complete 10 oscillations. So we dip it into the water and then depress it vertically and release such that it performs vertical oscillation. So we record the time for 10 complete oscillations. We note it and we record it. So in doing this, we have both the mass of the lead shot noted, we have both the depth of the lead shot inside the beaker noted, and then we have the time for 10 oscillations also noted. And then after doing this, now we'll, we'll repeat the procedure for four other values by increasing the quantity of the lead shot in the test tube. So uh, once we increase it, we now repeat the procedure again and then determine this other, um, um, the same um, quantities that we have determined and then we we'll tabulate our reading. So that's what the procedure is like. So with our tabulated reading, we'll now be expected to plot a graph of the mass of the lead shot on the vertical axis against T squared, that is the, the, the square of the period of oscillation on the horizontal axis, then the slope and the intercept on the vertical axis and then some few evaluations that we need to do. The precaution will always have to be there and then two short answer questions as is expected of us in this particular question. So this is what the procedure is. And then interpreting um, this alternative to practical, look at the diagram here. In this particular diagram, you can see that the first mass of lead shot given to us and its content in the, um, the test tube is given here as 51. I think you can read it off from your end. You can see the mass is 51. The, the second one is 53. The third one is 55. The fourth one is 58. And the last one is about 60. That is the total, both the test tube and the lead shot, as you see in the diagram here. Now, also from this diagram, we can be able to now find out the mass of the lead shot by, by deducting, by deducing the original mass of the, um, of the test tube, which was given to us in this question as 20 grams. So if you do that, you'll get the mass of the lead shot. And all this we are going to tabulate in our table. Also, from the diagram to the right, you will see the depth of immersion. And for alternative to practical, all you have to do is just to measure the length. Just use your meter rule and measure the length. So from the 0 cm point to D1 will give you the first one and then up to the fifth reading. And for us, what we got is that the depth is 5.1, 5.4, 5.6, 5.9, and 6.15. 
um, respectively for all the values that we had already mentioned. And then you, reading off the, the stop clock in figure 1C that you can see here, then the, from the diagram, we got our time from the stop clock to be 6.5, 6.8, 6.9, 7.4, and 7.5. Make sure that you read accurately because it, it will affect your reading if there's error in trying to interpret um, the diagram that is given to you. So, because we are expected to plot a graph of t squared on the horizontal axis, it means that we would have to find the period of the time. So, finding the period of the time means to, because we did 10 oscillations, so you're going to divide the time that you re read from the diagram by 10, and once you have done that, you now square your value and you will get t squared. And then they said we should evaluate L equal to the mass of the lead shot divided by the depth. All of this we have read already. So just do the division and record your answer. So here is what the table represents. The initial mass of the test tube is recorded on top of the table here as 20 gram. This was actually given to us in the question. And then you can see that the mass of the test tube and the lead shot, that is the solid is captured here in the first column. The mass of the lead shot is also required from us also in the second. That is by the time we have done our um, calculation, we got the remainder to be the mass of the lead shot. The depth of immersion is also recorded in centimeters. The time for 10 oxidations is also recorded here. And then the period is recorded. The square of the period is captured and then the evaluation they asked us to do, which is L, equal to the mass of the lesser divided by the depth so this is what the table is and then the question they ask us from this table is to plot a graph of the mass of lesser on the vertical axis against t squared on the horizontal axis so the here is our graph ml on the vertical axis t squared on the horizontal axis gives us a straight line graph that makes an intercept on the vertical axis. Of course, in the question, they said we should find the uh, intercept on the vertical axis. So, with this, we can plot, uh, deduce our slope, and then note our intercept on the vertical axis, which is 5.5. You can see it's just read it off on the vertical axis. But for the slope, we're going to find the change in the mass of length over the change in the square of the period. By the time we take our upper and the lower limits of our vertical axis and then also for the lower horizontal axis, we get our slope to be 61.11 gram per second squared. And then the intercept is also recorded. And then we asked, we are asked to evaluate K, which is equal to 4 pi squared X over Q. For Q, we are told that to deduce Q, we are going to find the mean of all of L. So I'll refer you to the table, add all of this L together and find their mean. That is adding them together, divide by the total number they are, they are about five here. And then the mean will give us 6.2769. So by the time we now substitute it into this particular expression, we have here that our answer is 384.66 centimeter per second square. What were the precautions we took during this experiment? We avoided parallax error in reading the weighing balance and the stop clock. We avoided zero error in reading the stop clock and the weighing, and the weighing balance. And then we ensured that the beaker was stable before we found the depth of immersion. We are asked to list the forces acting on the loaded test tube as it performs vertical oscillations in the water. Of course, there are three basic forces that will act on a solid in a liquid. Once a solid is immersed in a liquid, one of them is that the weight of that solid would act downwards. That, that weight is commensurate to the gravitational force. And then due to the liquid, there's an upward force um, that will act on that body. And then finally, the viscous force, which is the force due to friction in the liquid. And then finally, they say we should explain why the amplitude of oxidation of a loaded test tube decreases with time. The amplitude of a loaded test tube or the amplitude of oxidation of a loaded test tube decreases with time because of what we call the viscous force or what we refer to as the liquid friction. 
what this viscous force does is that it opposes the motion of the vibration of the body so these are all the questions they ask and i am very very much convinced that it will really help you immensely thank you for your time and your patience with us god richly bless you in jesus name amen